Hello, my name is John Kissel. I'm a gastroenterologist specializing in the care of patients with inflammatory bowel disease. And I've been given the opportunity to talk to you about a recent study that was performed by my research team in collaboration with other investigators at Mayo Clinic, which examined the risk of serrated epithelial changes in patients with uh, chronic colitis, uh, specifically chronic ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease of the colon. We know that patients with these diseases are at increased risk for colorectal cancer over time, and that risk is increased by how long patients have had disease, how old they are, uh, how extensive the disease is throughout the colon, and the presence of a comorbid liver illness called primary sclerosing cholangitis, which is seen almost exclusively in patients with chronic colitis. We know that adenomatous dysplasia, or adenomatous polyps, as well as sessile serrated polyps, also known as sessile serrated adenomas, are clear precursors for colorectal cancer. And we look for these types of lesions when we're performing routine surveillance colonoscopy to try to prevent cancer in patients with uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's colitis. Recently, pathologists uh, both at Mayo and at other academic and uh, community practice centers uh, throughout the country have identified a new type of uh, tissue abnormality seen in patients with chronic colitis called serrated epithelial change or flat serrated changes. These are often sampled by random biopsy and they have some of the serrated features that we commonly see with sessile serrated polyps although these uh, serrated epithelial changes are typically flat. Um, the introduction and the discovery of this uh, new type of uh, tissue finding in patients with chronic colitis has caused a lot of confusion for patients and doctors as they try to understand what type of implication this has for patients' overall risk of polyps or subsequent cancer. We also don't really know how common these lesions are. To try to address these questions, we performed a retrospective review of patients seen at Mayo Clinic between 2006 and 2012, and then followed these patients forward in the medical record to try to understand what their risk would be. Uh, serrated epithelial change lesions are very uncommon. If we look at nearly 4,000 patients having a colonoscopy for IBD in a three-year period of time between 2010 and 2012, we found these types of lesions at a rate of only about four per uh, 1,000 uh, colonoscopies uh, per patient. So they're, they're uncommon. We also found when we looked at the patients with serrated epithelial change compared to the overall number of patients having colonoscopy that the serrated epithelial change lesions were seen in patients who were at high risk for developing uh, colonic polyps or colorectal cancer. These patients were older, they had longer standing disease, and many of them had primary sclerosing cholangitis. We then followed these patients forward in the medical record, as I mentioned, and we tried to see how likely they were to get a subsequent colonic polyp or a subsequent colorectal cancer. And we also followed forward a group of controls, patients that did not have serrated epithelial change. We tried to balance these two groups for uh, other known risk factors of uh, colorectal cancer and precancers, such as long-standing disease, disease distributed widely throughout the colon, primary sclerosing, cholangitis, as well as age and sex. What we found was that compared to controls, patients with serrated epithelial change were at an increased risk of developing uh, precancerous polyps. About a third of patients developed a new polyp after about three years of follow-up. However, when we split the two groups, the serrated epithelial change patients and the control patients, into those patients who had had a previous pre-cancer, that statistical difference was abolished. There are some important limitations to this study. It was a relatively small sample size, and therefore our statistical power to determine a difference was somewhat limited. And also we had uh, the inability to study multiple vari variables, so multiple risk factors at the same time, which is why we used a stratification method based on prior uh, precancerous changes. In conclusion, what we found was that although the risk of developing a subsequent polyp was fairly high among both our controls and our patients with serrated epithelial change, most of that risk appeared attributable to the presence of other known risk factors, specifically precancerous polyps. Therefore, we in our practice have not altered our 
uh, surveillance or screening guidelines based on a new finding of serrated epithelial change alone and instead try to look at other more established clinical risk factors to guide our decision making. So precancers uh, definitively proven uh, would be uh, definitely the highest risk factor. Thank you very much for your time.